Okay, Cancer, this is a pretty emotionally intense week for you. And I say that knowing I'm talking to you. Um, it's especially emotional, but what I like about it is it's emotionally productive. Let's get into it. Cancer, this is your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries to Row. It is for Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. It's for you, even if you're not a Cancerian. This is your reading. Please use it where it resonates. If I use an example for career, but it applies more to your love life, that's your reading. Wherever in your life it resonates. I'm just using examples. This is an energy reading. I'm describing the energy. As well, Cancerians, there's always an extended reading. We're going to go over here in this reading, the current situation, whatever cards come out in the past, we will get into because it, that means that what that, that happened in the past is in, impacting what's going on today. And then we'll project out into the future and there's always an extended reading so that we can go deeper and get specific details like dates and places and people and great stuff. That link is down below. Um, I'll also put it to the top of the comment section. Where the moon is traveling through the third quadrant, um, or the second quadrant, I'm sorry. And what does that mean? It means it's below the horizon line so it's, it's internal. It's an internal journey. It's traveling between Gemini and Virgo. These are mutable signs, but that's okay because then it goes into Cancer. And when we go home, when that moon goes home, there is just beautiful energy that happens for us. Um, it is cathartic. It will be emotional, but it will also be kind of spread your wings, like liberating. Um, Leo, it's pretty tough energy. We get uh, the moon gets uh, squared to all of the other major inner planets, the sun, Mercury, Venus, uh, just challenges, challenges with feeling appreciated, feeling loved and being seen. And then we slide into, um, oh, what did I say? I'm so sorry. I lost my, my train of thought, Virgo. Um, and the moon in Virgo can get very worrisome. Um, it can struggle with hype, being a hypochondriac, like worrying too much. So the best thing I would recommend in all the houses that it's passing through, especially when it goes through Leo, take care of you. If other people are not making you feel special, you make you feel special. This is a wonderful time for a day of beauty, a massage, or to say, listen, where I'm not appreciated by others, I will be appreciated for myself. I don't think that you'll be really understood. There might be a few clashes this weekend with people who are Leo, Taurus, Libra, Virgo, Gemini. When, when you hit that point of contention when the moon goes into Leo, this sense of me, who am I with regards to them? And because this, the moon is traveling through the second quadrant of the zodiac. It talks about all of our family relationships, the relationships that went into forming us um, when we were just understanding who we are and understanding who we are to these people. This is the time while right before we rise into the third and fourth quadrants, which is our public selves and our friendships and relationships. But this is like friendships, relationships, family that kind of rooted us. So especially since the moon is going to be visiting cancer, I could tell you guys right now, there's something to do with family life, the fourth house, the family that you came from. While the moon is in Cancer, it does something really beautiful and it forms a grand trine, it forms a grand water trine between Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces. So your imagination, your inv invention, your creativity, your dreaminess, your specialness, your heart, your compassion is in harmony then with who you are yourself in your first house. And it's also trying to... Um, Mercury, um, yeah, is it is it definitely Venus, the, the Sun and Mercury, and in the Sun and Mercury in Scorpio? So I think that there's there's like there's this energy of okay, but let me go back. When that grand trine is happening, um, 
the moon is in direct opposition to Pluto in Capricorn. So there's something here about the clash between the mother or father figure or between you and your father figure or an authority figure in your life. But there's support coming from so many other places. There's, there's harmony when, it, when it's almost like in some ways a chorus of we understand you, we get what it means. And then there will be struggles and challenges with regards to how you are valued or how you feel valued. Um, so honestly, it is not an easy week, but it is going to be a very productive week because I, I feel like a lot of shit's coming out in order to be healed and made well. And when you dip your waters into Virgo, which is, which is the sixth house, which is healing, that's really a time for things to get better and those worries to be released. You know, um, you can also just, I'm sorry, I'm itching my eye. You can use that Virgo energy to really nurture yourself, heal yourself, take care of yourself. There's this beautiful sense of being put through the ringer so that you can really exercise all that negative energy, especially with that opposition to Pluto where things can get really emotional, super intense in order to find love and compassion and brilliance again. So. What do we got with the cards? See the big picture. Damn. This is Taurus energy. This could also be finances. This is, things are getting bigger for you. Thing, your, your reach is starting to branch out. You're not as limited anymore. It's also a call for you to realize you are not limited. So it's saying that seeing a bigger picture is gonna really help you this week because when you're stuck with family shit, ultimately what that kind of can do to you is, is bring you back to a place where you feel stuck, that like you have to be what you were created to be instead of who you are. Zooming out and realizing, A, these people aren't perfect, I'm not perfect, I can't take this stuff so seriously that I let it lets it deter, deteriorate me. And what will help you with that is zooming out to see the full picture, the full perspective. And I do think you're going to get a fuller perspective, a wider perspective, and even realize there's stuff out there for me beyond these confines, right? It's almost like you're getting a glimpse of what's over that horizon. We also have dreamed the world into being. So this is the manifestation of what you've bought in with you from your past life or what you've always dreamed of creating. The death and the sadness is behind you. You don't have to look that way anymore. You can start to look forward. Or the things that you pulled out of the land of mysteries, the pieces of you that had died away, is giving birth to all that the version of you that you are manifesting for the future think on your feet is here which is sagittarian energy this is also jupiterian energy looking beyond thinking outside of being okay with thinking outside of the box but it's saying there will be curveballs thrown at you go with them definitely say yes there's a bigger picture going on here that, and and you may not see it all but you will get clues from the universe that are saying, hey, Cancerian, trust that. Take that hard left. Take that hard right. Do it. Um, this could even be, in some ways, a Cancerian that you had a, I'm sorry, a Sagittarius. This is very specific. This could only be for some of you. But it could be a Sagittarius that you had a sensual or sexual relationship with from the past coming back it could surprise you and then there's something moving forward in the future that i don't think you would be able to predict let's get a little deeper into that because i want to predict it what do you mean god what do you mean who might we be seeing if so this person is at a distance a lot of shit has dropped. Let me get let me get to the cards. Let's get, let's get into the cards. A lot of stuff has dropped out at the base of the reading. So let's see what the foundation is. All these cards are clear out the clutter. Be at home. Yeah, cleaning up family garbage, family bullshit. 
um, letting go, letting go of pain, letting go of suffering, letting go, letting go of anger, letting go of guilt, letting go of shame, letting go of all those emotions. It's almost like saying, yeah, you've grown, you've grown past that, right? And even maybe, maybe many members of your family have grown past it or somebody else has grown up and finally gotten out of the shadow or confines of their family or their family expectations. And that's why they're able to kind of like look beyond and see farther than they originally could. Co-create with spirit is here, which is, there's, a, there's just something magical or destined about it. It also comes out of the dark, so it feels like it comes out of nowhere. Um, that's very scorpionic energy. It's like somebody comes back from the dead. Not really, but it's, and, and they haven't really been dead, but you haven't thought about them in a long time. Or, yeah, kind of like that. And then we have, there is always enough, lots of emotions still here, lots of emotions still pent up, lots of emotions, lots of fondness, lots of romance too. This is Piscean energy. This is still connectivity, connection. Life is a mystery. Somebody's still hiding their feelings or these are hidden feelings that come out of the dark or come out of nowhere. So that's where the surprise is going to come from, probably going to come from the fourth house or when you're surrounded by your family, so at least you can feel loved and protected. Now we have these two cards. Love is all around you. This is Gemini energy. Let's go back to the astrology for a second. There's going to be a really interesting combo when the moon is in Gemini. The, when the moon is in Gemini, this is like Friday, Saturday into Sunday, I think, she, the moon is basically going to be sitting right on top of Mars. The moon is going to be conjunct Mars. That is conflicting energy because they don't mesh well there's a sense of emotionally like like but since mars is in retrograde it's almost like a retrospective of your actions and how you feel about them or the or the emotions like how those actions have emotionally impacted you becomes very clear it could also represent emotions that you wish you took action on or somebody wishes they took action on from the past since Mars is still square to Neptune and Jupiter and moving forward into Cancer the, the moon will be trying with it it's almost like owed emotions or finally getting appreciation or um, just just like uh, opportunity that you you hadn't gotten before there seems to be a review of some sort love is all around in gemini so it just feels like there's it's bringing up a lot of love and emotions this is flattery words people using their words to say nice things to you uh, people being particularly kind or you being particularly kind because you want to mend bridges um, it could also be saying, be very kind with your words, um, be very open hearted. But I think this is usually being hearing, hearing, um, hearing compliments, getting a lot of compliments and bring a gentle touch is Virgo. That's interesting. From Gemini to Virgo, you're going to experience a lot of love. And I think it's love that you did not expect or from an unexpected place, an unexpected source and unexpected help and I think what what is that unexpected coming from like I said is somebody in your family could be Sagittarius it could also be um, it's just hidden emotions that finally get brought to the surface um, you've held on to this these feelings for a while or somebody never told you this now let's get into <laughs> we're gonna get into it dude this is just beginning this is just beginning Cancer, please be specific. What is all this about? The hanged man. Oh yeah, we've been stuck. Uh, it's almost like in some ways you couldn't move forward or this is the cocoon phase where you get really emotional and you crumble emotionally to break down. It's saying it's happening to you. This current situation is, is right before you can spread your wings. That's what it's saying. It's also meaning that you've been in limbo with somebody for a while. Uh, five of Pentacles, Five of Wands. You've been stuck because somebody's been extremely competitive and extremely greedy and extremely self-serving with money, Comp competing over money um, as if there's not enough, competing over money or not having money or there might be some financial issues that you have to address and you feel stuck and hung out to dry letting yourself be loved instead of feeling like you always have to be the nurturer 
So you might be high and dry when it comes to finances. You may be stuck without money for some reason and you may be forced to be vulnerable and have to need somebody. And you are going to find that it's going to be okay because your family has got you or people around you have got you. It's almost like it's a wonderful life. If you've ever seen that movie, he contemplates suicide the whole movie. He's like, you know, that's what he was doing. He was contemplating suicide. I'm not saying any of you are. But, but um, that's the movie. He was contemplating, um, you know, what if I would never existed, the world would have been better. And then the angel uh, comes and shows him how the world would actually have been without him. And it's, it's not good. And so by the end of the movie, he really finally admits, hey, I'm having these struggles, I'm having these problems. And he, he doesn't have money, he doesn't get win the lottery or get a major job, but all, as soon as anybody realizes, as soon as everybody realizes he needs help, they bring him food, they bring him cash, they bring him clothes, they bring all of his friends because he had been so valuable to people in so many ways that his value couldn't be measured in money. And because he just kept, kept imploding and imploding and imploding, he doesn't realize that he kept like, if I can't give, I'm nothing. If I can't provide, I'm nothing. But he had given and he was worth so much to people that it was, it was friendship that really carried him through. It was people will show up for you. Let yourself be loved. So underlying all this energy cancer is this let yourself be loved. Love finally coming into your life. And there's some cards you want to see, bitch. Oh, hell. Oh, hello. I'm not going to leave you hanging, but please do uh, give this video a like if you've made it this far. I assume that you're enjoying the reading. So please remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel so that you know when I upload your favorite content. Ring that notification bell too so you'll get notified when it's fresh off the press. And if you want to join me, I have a second YouTube channel. It's called Astrology Motivation, and that is where I do daily live interactive tarot card readings, not question and answer tarot card readings. It's a general tarot card reading, but it's still a live chat, and I hope that you join me um, over there. You can find it. I'll attach the link above somewhere. Hold on. You ready? Six of cups, bitch. What does that mean? What did I say? And it's it's not always that the cards just match up with each other. Sometimes they confuse the crap out of me, to be honest with you. But this is saying this is a love. This is a romance. This is a love from the past. I think that you and somebody else were very, very... You're, you were misunderstanding each other, but it's like you finally are able to come together and remember how much you meant to each other. So this is love returning. Stop. It does not mean romantic love. It don't mean fucking. It it could be you finally love your mother again. It could be you could finally talk to your father again. It could be you're finally talking to your siblings again, or, your, or a friend that had left your life and things were left up in the air. And there's so many emotions to go through. The two of you can finally talk again, but it's going to make you feel really good, and it's gonna it's gonna bring back that joy of childhood. There's this real nostalgia. But that's sort of sad, isn't it? There's this real happy memory kind of energy about this card. It's coming out a little bit in your future. So I would say toward the end of the week um, and six of pentacles. Bitch, please. You got six, six. What does that mean? What does that mean? Venus, Venus. That means two hearts coming together. Also, lots of opportunity, lots of joy. People like it's a wonderful life. People giving, people giving, people showing up for you, people turning out for you, people taking care of you, feeling like, feeling the love that maybe you never felt as a child or feeling the love that you haven't felt since you were a child. Feeling loved. You want to know why? Because you are opening yourself up and allowing yourself to receive. Let's find out a little bit more. We didn't pull a moon card. Stop. Er you know what I love about this reading so far? There's nothing coming up in the past. So we ain't dealing with... I love you. Shit just... Shit, shit. The moon card just slid out in the past. And that's where the only moon card is showing up. So let's see. Let's see, because I think this will give us a clue as to what the situation is. More specific. Confidence is your key to success. New moon in Leo. In the past. You knew this person loved you in the past or you were confident in these feelings or, oh, you know what I just heard? 
you didn't realize that somebody cared about you this much. This person is probably a Leo or a very confident, attractive, beautiful, like, like, like somebody that, that meant a lot, but it's in the past. It's almost like you wish you would have had confidence or they wish they would have had the confidence in the past to show you how much you care, in to show you how much they care or for you to show them how much. You know, somebody wanted, w wish they had the confidence in the past. Now they get the shot. Now they get the chance. And it's a wonderful chance. And the chances always come to us when we're ready. Cancer, let me take a brief pause here and just announce a very, very special, special decision I've made in celebration of our 100,000 plus subscribers now and even astrology motivation is doing so well the channels are thriving the business is growing God bless you I am organizing my first ever meet and greet live meet and greet it is going to be in March of 2023 there's going to be two ways that you can participate one virtually from anywhere on earth through a live chat it's going to be zoom or vimeo details will follow or two you will be able to actually show up to the live event in austin texas drive take a plane take a train um there'll be a list of hotels and stuff if you're coming in you, you know if you're coming in and, and traveling and stuff it is going to include a full hour and a half long sound bath healing meditation full-on cleanse and then the ability for us to open up and see each other and look each other in the eye for the first time when we're enjoying some nice food and good drink um, lots of wonderful things I'll have special um, special merch there that I have I don't have on any of my um, in any of my stores yet um, that you can purchase at a discounted rate um, especially for members. Members will be getting a lot of shit. Um, I just appreciate all you guys. But there's going to be a lot of fun stuff that's going on. And maybe if my tarot cards are printed by then, I can debut those decks to you as well. I can't promise that though because I don't even have a publisher yet. But we'll see. We'll see if it happens. Um, pray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a poll on the community feed. Please look for this poll on the community feed. It's gonna say live or virtual. Just answer what you think you can participate in if you're interested at all. I want to get a ballpark head count so that I can, um, I know exactly which room in the studio to rent. So you guys let me know, look out for that poll. It'll be up probably Friday or the weekend and then bum rush it and just let me know. As for right now, let's see who all this opportunity and all this generosity is coming from. It seems like this is beautiful, beautiful compliments, opportunity, love, people showing you value that they just didn't show you before and they want to and they wanted that chance. Let's get deeper into it. The extended is down below. I'll see you guys there.